I realized that I was lucky. I was very lucky. I am blessed. Monica O'Neill, a retired Atlanta grandmother, feels fortunate to be alive. In late 2022, Monica was in excruciating pain. She had been having pain in her back for about nine months and uh, came in trying to get some help. They saw that it was not just a sciatica. I had a tumor in my spine. There was certainly ca uh, cause for alarm. Dr. Sexton recommended that a neurologist do the surgery right away. He tried to get her primary care doctor involved, but that office, along with many others like it, shut down when an Atlanta hospital near Monica closed its doors. My primary doctor said, look, sorry, you have to find yourself a doctor because we're closing the office. In that moment, I really, I felt really like a sm small. I found a neurologist, but because it, it would be like a new patient, it would take them like a month to take care of me. Monica's daughter kept calling neurologists, but no one could see her. My husband left me with good health insurance. I have all the ways to be able to have doctors and to have this, the service and the help. Despite having insurance and a daughter to make appointments and drive her, Monica couldn't find help. Her legs became worse. Now they were swollen, painful, and hot. She could no longer sleep or even lay down. You're like, okay, I, I'm done. I'm just gonna cry. I'm gonna just lay here and cry because I just don't know where to go. The fact that she was unable to get the care that she needed quickly was, uh, it was unconscionable. That tumor could have spread. It could have caused permanent uh, neurologic problems such as paralysis. With nowhere to turn, Monica's daughter drove her mom to a hospital emergency room across the city. The hospital admitted her and scheduled surgery right away. I went through a, a, a very bad situation that made me think about those people, the people that don't have anybody to rely on. Dr. Sexton sees Monica's case as an example of what could happen to anyone. The answer, he says, is doing away with laws that prevent hospitals and even surgery centers from opening. He says Georgia's certificate of need laws are actually causing a lack of health care and are doing much more harm than good. They don't really consider what are the actual needs of the community, but uh, uh, the needs of uh, entities that are quite frankly, protected. Here's a striking example of how that's played out in Atlanta. There are no uh, surgical centers south of I-20 in the city of Atlanta inside the perimeter, zero. Despite the lack of care south of I-20, CON laws would keep other medical facilities, hospitals, or surgical centers from providing care here. If I said I wanted to open a center in this community because I believe there's a need, there would be a host of uh, entities that would line up and, and uh, argue that point. He says Georgia CON laws haven't stopped hospital closures in rural or urban areas and that things have to change. They inhibit competition, they inhibit the market, and suggest that regulations can do a better job at determining what a community's needs are as opposed to those people that live in the community. Many states have done away with these laws, but have added protections. Rhode Island, for example, has laws in regards to private equity that can come into certain communities having to have the ability to audit their books. The current laws, he says, will continue to hurt the very people they were designed to help, people like Monica. If I was by myself alone, I probably let myself just die.